Hello again. Um, if you've been with us this week, you know that we've been going through the different pieces of armor that would be typically worn by a, a Roman legion or a legionnaire. And uh, we've looked at the first couple of things. We've talked about the belt of truth, how important it is that we wrap ourselves in the truth of God and try to submit ourselves to it, even when it's painful to have to face up to certain things. Secondly, we talked about what that brings us to is the breastplate of righteousness. How do we uh, really wrap ourselves or begin to live in that righteous protection of God's truth. If I know that I'm in right relationship with God, then I don't have to depend upon hardening my heart to withstand the attacks that will come to you from uh, dark things in this world as well as spiritual wickedness outside of this world in the realm of the spirit. It's interesting because the next piece of armament isn't often thought of in our world as being that critical, but basically he says having your feet fitted with ready, the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Most people don't realize this, but one of the geniuses of the Roman military was the fact that they understood the importance of a good pair of shoes. Uh, actually, they, were, they called them a boot. They were, the term is a Caligia. Um, in fact, there was a Roman emperor by the name of Caligula, which was a name which the legionnaires had given to him when he was a little boy. His father, Germanicus, was a famous uh, Roman general, and he used to take Caligula with him, dressed him in a little Roman uh, uh, legionnaire's outfit, and he had those little little boots made for him to they're kind of a boot sandal uh, combination but uh, they were called Caligula and so he got the nickname as being Caligula he was also crazy insane and super uber wicked when he became emperor but that's another story but what's interesting about these boots or these shoes or sandals that they wore is that they, even though they were kind of opened, had, they had a closed toe, very thick sole, and um, they had hobnails in the, in the soles uh, on the ground so that they could lock their feet into position. When you think about it, an army's charging at you. You've got a bunch of, you know, six foot five German uh, <laughs> axe wielding, uh, uh, long haired, uh, frightening creatures charging down at you in mass, and you lock your shields and you wait for the enemy to bang into you. What helps you a great deal is being able to have a firm footing. And so he says, you know, we, we need to have our feet firmly set in order to withstand the attacks of the enemy. And that means that what we've done is we've fitted ourselves with a gospel of peace. And it's interesting, those two words, gospel and peace, that we are determined that everything about our life is ultimately the expression of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Christ might be lived out in us. And I understand the moment I say that to most of us, we start thinking of, oh great, here comes guilt time for me because I fall so short of his glory. I get it, we're all in the same place. There's none of us who are an exception. But the simple fact is that when we realize or at least recognize that the battle that we fight is over the souls of men and the real mission we have is to be ambassadors for Christ, something Paul will talk about later on, we'll probably get to next week. But when we recognize that this is our role, the ministry of reconciliation, what we're offering to people is a message of life and hope that can save not only in this world, but save eternally. So that when we begin to orient ourselves around that idea that this is the most important thing, this is the ground that I'm standing on, when he says three times, stand, stand firm, do whatever you can to stand, that requires to have a good footing, to be firmly footed into the gospel of grace. And there's a huge difference between the gospel of grace and religion. Many Christians engage in religion. And basically what that is, is religion is man's attempt by his own good works to get to heaven. You know, man's own works, depending on your own works, to bring the blessing or the grace or the goodness of God into your life so that you can prosper or whatever. And that's always predicated on this idea, if you do this, then God will do that. As if God is the heavenly paymaster. And the gospel of peace says God has freely given to us something that we can never earn. He's freely giving to us something that we would never rise to. The idea of the prince and the pauper, that the pauper has nothing and suddenly he's raised up to the position of a prince, not by his own efforts and endeavor. He just simply is chosen by the king and placed in the position of being a prince. And he can't credit himself for anything. It's all based upon the desire of the king. 
And so it is with us, this gospel grace, not by works which we have done, but by his grace, by his mercy, by his love that he has shown to us. And we need to be really, that needs to be the soil that we're really digging into in our life, that we put our spikes into the ground and we determine, we lean forward, you know, against the charge of the enemy so that we will not be moved. It's our leverage that gives us an advantage over everything the enemy throws at you. But he says, also realize that it's not the gospel of warfare, it's the gospel of peace. That basically those who are coming against us are going to be aggressive. They're going to be desiring to inflict us with as much pain and damage as they can. They're, want, they're going to want you to take off the breastplate of righteousness and so that they can begin to send fiery darts into your heart that will wound and cripple you and maybe even destroy you. And so, you know, as we put on that belt and we secure that, that, that sh breastplate on our, our, our bodies by that belt of truth that we have below, we also realize that we need to stand firm and hold our ground so that when the enemy comes, we are really saying, I need to stand firm so I can declare and display the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that I want to do it with a heart of peace towards those who may, in fact, be my worst enemies. This has become so critical because really the Romans understood that if you give up ground, it's not long before you'll lose the whole battle. You know, they, and so what they did is they learned and they disciplined their soldiers to, again, not only take their positions side by side and locking their shields together, but digging in their feet firmly and holding those shields in place and leaning into them so when the enemy came, it was like they were hitting a brick wall. And when they, they usually found that the enemies could make three attacks like that, by the third attack, they usually would break and run, and then they could begin to advance. But the Roman soldiers didn't stop just take off and start running up the hill chasing after the enemy because the enemy could easily reform and then begin to cut them down. What they did was they marched in formation steadily, always making sure that their feet are secured in the ground. You can't imagine how many battles have been lost because of unsure footing. I love the psalmist where he says, you know, you, you keep me from turning my ankle. Uh, if you've ever walked around the, the, the Judean countryside, you realize that there's so many places to slip and fall. One time, I actually stepped on the ribbing of a boat on the Sea of Galilee and twisted my foot and broke uh, the bone on my little toe that was called a fifth metatarsal. And I was in a cast, had to have surgery in a cast for months to get that sick thing to heal because I just simply turned my foot on the rib of a boat. I often tell people I tried to walk on the, the Sea of Galilee and the water's a lot harder than I realized. Well, the truth of the matter was, I simply broke one of the most smallest, most uh, inconsequential in many ways bones in my entire body. The problem is that there's so little blood circulation there that it will not heal. So to this very day, I've got this really cool titanium screw that you know, I got the, uh, the uh, x-ray showing it. The, the, the surgeon did a marvelous job of inserting this together, but it took many months to heal. My whole point is this. We often find that great battles are lost because people don't have firm footing. They're just not holding themselves to the ground. The firmest place for us, us to stand is in the gospel of God's grace. It not only assures us that we are a forgiven people, but it also predisposes us to be forgiving of others so that we feel the peace of God in our own heart because of his grace, knowing that we are forgiven. But we also can extend that same peace to those who oppose us because we know that God wants to reach them just the way he reached you. You realize that I used to be that guy coming against Christians and giving them a hard time. Uh, and now I'm, the shoe is literally on the other foot, but I have the shoes of the gospel. I'm fitted with those and I can hold the ground of truth. And that's really how you defeat the enemy, not by chasing them down and getting them to comply with what you think they should do, but holding your ground, standing firm in the gospel of peace. I hope this makes sense because I think it's a, it's a crucial part of the journey for you and I as, as followers of Jesus Christ. So anyway, go in his grace, many blessings, and tomorrow we'll, we'll come to the end of the week. We're going to talk about the shield of faith uh, and the important play, place that plays in our role it plays in our life as followers of Jesus. So God bless you and go in his good grace.